Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. A number of you have reached out to me and asked questions about preparation for COVID-19. So on today's show, we're talking about the preparation that we've done in our family. It's stunning to me that I still talk to people on a daily basis who have made zero steps to prepare for a possible period of complete social isolation. Many who I spoke with in the past week had less than a week's supply in their pantry. We started preparing for the possibility of a social lockdown over a month ago. As of now, we have about eight weeks of supplies, such that we could remain isolated for 60 days without going shopping if we needed to. We're still going out to the grocery every few days and making sure we keep the pantry topped up. We're also mindful that as the disease spreads in the community, so too does the risk of going out even for a single trip to the grocery store. Venturing out sooner is lower risk than venturing out later. Our latest visit to the grocery shows that the shops are empty of many essential items at this point. There's no flour, very little in the way of paper products like toilet paper, no rice, no coconut milk, and no tofu. Some stores had run out completely of some canned goods. We made sure to have a large supply of canned items and dried goods that have a long shelf life. In some cases, that means double bagging things to make sure they remain fresh. Canned goods have the benefit of being easy to trade if there's something that you need that someone else has. Now, in our family, we eat largely fresh food. We have a vegan diet, which means no meat and no dairy. At some point, if we face a lockdown situation, we may have to rely upon the food we have in our house completely for an extended period of time. We'll be relying on beans as our primary source of protein. We have a lot of chickpeas, lentils, and beans that we can use in preparing meals. We also purchased a fair bit of frozen vegetables. This is not something we would normally consume, but if we're not going out, they will come in handy in meal preparation. We have a healthy supply of spices, and when we speak about food tasting good, that has more to do with the seasoning of the food than the taste of the underlying ingredients. We recognize that part of our emotional well-being will center around how we care for ourselves and how well we eat. We have a few meals of prepared foods that are frozen, and they can be quickly heated and served. We don't have a lot of them because they take up a disproportionate amount of space in the freezer. We have dried foods like rice and pasta. Some wonder how to calculate how many days of food are in their cupboard. For example, a one-pound package of pasta will feed about four servings, or about 100 grams per person if you do the math using the metric system. There are some things that we've not purchased. For example, we've not gone out and bought the freeze-dried foods, what some people call astronaut food. That's partly because these portions are about four times the cost of regular food. They do have a long shelf life, but it's far from something we would normally eat. We felt that sticking close to real food was the best choice for our family. We made certain assumptions about what will remain operational. For example, we expect that running water will continue to function, and that electricity will still be fairly reliable. And so far, we haven't seen any cases of mass outages anywhere in the Western world. There's some risk but it's not a huge risk. Now, if you're relying on your own well water for drinking water, then you should definitely stock up on drinking water. If you face an equipment failure, it could be a long time before you get someone to service and fix your pump. There might be part shortages that extend the outage even longer. We made sure we have a two-month supply of soap for the dishwasher and for the laundry. We do laundry on a regular basis, and this will be even more important if we go out for any errands. When we come back into the house from the grocery, the clothes go straight into the laundry and we go straight into the shower. Soap and water is very effective in killing the virus, even more so than bleach. Soap is made up of two-sided molecules. One side is attracted to the water, the other side is attracted to fat. And viruses are made up of a material surrounded by a coating of both protein and fat. And when viruses interact with soap, that fat coating gets ripped out by the soap molecules. The soap literally demolishes the virus. If you do the math on the amount of social isolation that's going to be required to protect our healthcare system, you quickly come to the conclusion that the period of social isolation we're talking about is not measured in weeks. It's likely measured in months. And I'm starting to think that my 60-day plan might be a little bit light. And Dr. Chris Martinson's 12-month stash is starting to look more attractive. If you haven't heard that episode, it's episode 798 on March 21st, just a couple of days ago. So that's what we've done in our family to prepare for a period of social isolation. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.